Hey YouTube, hi testing community. Thanks for coming by today. It's me, Daniel, happy that you're here. Welcome to my channel, Software Testing. You have seen it in the title. Today, I would like to talk about a mobile testing strategy that you can define in only three simple steps. A powerful test strategy that can be executed or created in, let's say a few hours and you can start writing testing on your mobile devices, on your mobile apps and to get the best out of it. Without further ado, let's jump right into the slide deck. So why mobile testing matters? It's still important for you as a tester, software tester to test on mobile devices because mobile users have a really, really high expectation when it comes to mobile apps. I'm included myself. When I use my mobile device, I expect all the apps are running perfectly smoothly because I do almost everything with a mobile device from banking, travel booking, taking photos, taking videos, sharing information with others, reading information. I expect that this is safe, secure and stable. And that's why mobile users have this high expectation. Um, some numbers are like really interesting to, for you to know is that an average user opens an app more than 50 or like apps 50 per day. This is also impressive. Not myself included. I maybe use like 10 apps a day, but more frequently, but it depends on the use case. But there's some average numbers here. Another interesting numbers that are now coming is like 80% of users delete an app after the first usage because they don't like it. 80%, that's a huge number. So nearly 60% of users will delete an app that requires a registration. I think myself included, I hate it when I download an app that was promised me, promising me like really nice features on the app stores and I see like, oh, I need to sign in and to sign up. I don't, I'm, I'm tired of that. So this is something you have to keep in mind. First, show the users like what they can expect, give them a trial period, a trial access, whatever, and then ask them for registration. Um, users expect that an app loads under two seconds. Also something that is really important. So speed matters and you have to test for that as well. And here are four top reasons for deleting an app. So the first one is a bad design. If you have a bad design implemented in your app, better get help from a UX or design expert to get a really well looking app out there. Second one is bad usability, which goes hand in hand from my point of view with the design, because usually the design also Im Im implicitly have an impact on the usability, something that is really important. Can you use the app with one hand, for example, uh, are every control element easy used, uh, easy usable and reached and also tappable and stuff like that. Loading times, you have seen the example, two seconds is the, the, um, the important number over here. So users expect the speedy app, responsive app. An app crashes is also something that users hate, myself included, if an app crashes like, oh, oh my God, what happened now? Is my data safe? Is it still there? What's, what happened basically? Yeah, so that's important. So that's why it's important for you to take some time to define a mobile testing strategy. Hey, sorry for the break, but I would like to thank you, the main sponsor of today's video, which is DeviceCloud. With the help of DeviceCloud.dev, you can run your Maestro mobile tests on plus 100 different mobile devices in the cloud, being it iOS or Android devices. In case you're already using Maestro in your team or company, you can make use of device cloud with one single word swap in your command line interface. Super fast and super easy. No additional effort needed. If you're already familiar with the Maestro Studio features, you will love the devicecloud.dev features too, because they add some additional features on top. You can run your Maestro scripts now on iPads or other tablets in the cloud. You can finally test your apps in landscape mode. You have access to the Google Play API to test your Android in-app purchase. And last but not least, you get all the features in real-time console. You have to check it out. If you haven't heard about devicecloud.dev, make sure to follow the links in the video description to speed up your mobile test automation journey today. And now back to the main video. And here are three steps that you can perform basically. Number one is or not number none, but with the following three steps, you can already define a powerful test strategy. That's what I wanted to say. That's important. So really the most important thing when on the next slide is focus on what is most relevant for you, because there is no single 
test strategy for mobile apps that you can say, okay, I use this strategy for mobile app A, then for mobile app B and so forth. No, that's not possible. You have to do it for every app again and again and to revise it also from time to time. Yeah, that's what I want here. So step number one for your test strategy is keep uh, know your customers and get most information about your customers. You have to know them like what kind of devices are they using. So because without this knowledge, you will most likely fail with testing and product development. And the good news is in case you are a tester and you don't have access to those data, talk to your product manager. I bet he or she has this information available in best case. If not, do some competitor analysis or check the market research, do some market research, get some market research data for you to identify, to narrow down your customer target base, to know and to learn about their habits, like uh, learn about insights about their usage patterns, right? So which devices are they using? Where are they using the devices and the apps are on the go while commuting somewhere fancy in environment, outdoors, indoors, in office environments, get all those information, it's important. And also like what other apps do they use? What are the competitors? What are the competitors doing? What are they doing good? What are they not uh, doing so good? Some th information that you should gather in order to have a clear focus on your target customers. Yeah. As I said, talk to your product manager about this data. I bet he or she has it already and he or she has to share it because it's so important information for a development team and for software testers. So that's um, the first step. So and based on this information, you can get the right test devices to narrow down the devices you have to test on. Because if you notice that you, uh, your customers use only five devices, really uh, like 80% of the, the overall app usage is coming from five devices, hooray, get only those five devices. Yeah? Then you can also test in the correct environment. Depending on where users are using your product, is it on the go, outside, inside, in the office environment, you can go there as well and do some in the wild manual testing as well. Have a clear user focus is important because if you know what users expect, what they would like to do, what problem they would like to have solved and stuff like that, focus, 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 it's important. So that's step number one, gather data of your customers. Step number two, define your requirements. So what are really your requirements for your mobile app? And that's again, pair up with your product manager to define the mobile app requirements. Read the documentation, read the acceptance criteria, read user stories, read epics, read the roadmap. Everything that you can get from product managers helps you as a software tester to focus and to really prepare for your testing activities. Yeah? Because if you know the main requirements of the mobile app, you can define your test scenarios and activities accordingly. Yeah? And we come to that in a second. Because possible requirements can be of a mobile app. Users must be able to register. Users must be able to log into the app. Users must be able to add items to a shopping cart. Users can choose between different payment methods. All this kind of information and requirements already triggers in my mind testing ideas. What I can do on a mobile app to test it and to get the best possible um, product out there for our customers. Yeah? Because the requirements, they will also help you to use risk-based testing, for example, to focus on the most um, relevant and most important areas for your product. And then also to to get to not focus on the like the, the the boring stuff, not so important stuff. So that's why important get the requirements right, know them, and based on that knowledge, you can get back basically to the next step, which is the step three is define your testing approach. Yeah, something that you can do. So you should answer the following question for yourself, and it's just an excerpt of questions that you should answer yourself, like. Which part of the app can be automated on which layer? Because automation is still important for your mobile testing strategy. Yeah, We come to an example on the next slide. What are the parts that can be automated and need intensive or, uh, or need intensive manual testing? That's important. It's also an important question because some parts you can automate and can just re leave it out to regression testing. Some parts are really hard to automate. Doesn't make sense to automate, so we need to do more manual testing. Something that you should be clear of. Um, are there any hardware specific functions, features that be used by the app? Yeah, so let's say sensors camera sensors, different sensors, proximity sensors, GPS, anything that is being used by the app that is really hardware specific. Note it down because this is usually something that is hard to automate, something that you have to focus manually on. Yeah. 
What are the non-functional requirements of the app? Speed, we already learned, it's important. What is about accessibility, security, and load and performance? Is this also something that you have to keep in mind? Keep it early enough in your testing strategy because otherwise in the long run you will, you will benefit from it. If you don't think about early enough in the process of the development, you might fail with the non-functional requirements. And that's what I meant before. Automation is important and that's why mobile, that's what I just said here, mobile automation is important, but um, not always the first choice because sometimes depending on your use cases and the requirements, it might be the case that you need to do more manual testing than automated testing. But in case you can do automation in your app, think about the old stupid test pyramid. So there are unit tests, server tests, UI tests. Don't don't just blind. I've seen it. I've seen it many times that people just use mobile automation from an end-to-end -end perspective and that they completely fail because it's a nightmare to maintain. It's long. It's, it takes too much time to execute. It's really slow and it's expensive. But really talk to developers like what are the things that we can test on a unit level on the app, component level. How can we do some integration testing? What is with API testing? Try to automate as many, many things as possible before the UI and then focus maybe on five to ten user journeys throughout your app that you can automate from a, from a UI perspective that are critical for your business, critical for your users. And then you have like a really well set defined of automation in place. And then automation will help you to free up your time to focus on more important topics, as I mentioned before, hardware specific features or like testing on multiple devices at the same time requires more manual work. Yeah. And, and the second thing is you can use the mobile testing cheat sheet, which you can find for free in the video description down below on my blog, Adventures in QA. And this contains more than 20, I don't know, 23, 24 different mobile testing specific types and areas that you can focus on. Get the cheat sheet, download it for free, and then mark the areas that are really important for your app, important for you, for your product, for your goals, and then test those aspects accordingly on the mobile app from a manual approach. And this will help you to really focus on the most important things in your strategy and also for your mobile application. Yeah? And last but not least, think about the non-functional requirements from day zero. Bring this topic up to your product manager, to the developers, to really think in, in, this, in this direction, to have a speedy, responsive app, because that's what the users are looking for. Keep it in mind, please. And last but not least, take your time in defining the mobile app strategy, right? Don't rush it. Don't rush the strategy, especially the getting to, to know the customers is really important. It may take some time. Talk to the involved parties, such as product managers and developers, to really get the complete picture of the mobile architecture, of the backend structure, of the mobile roadmap, to really get your strategy right. Um, that's what I meant before. Gather the data and the requirements. Um, think about the automation on the different layers, really important. Think about it long enough, talk with the developers, discuss it with the developers, how they can support you in terms of test automation. Maybe you can do also some more static analysis, analyzing tools or like some um, pair programming and these kind of topics, important. Yeah? Make a list with the help of the cheat sheet for the mobile specific use cases, put them into your strategy and you can directly start working on mobile testing. Yeah. To be honest, don't write long strategy papers. Yeah. You can use a Morrow board or any collaboration tool, use a mind map tool to write down all your features that you have implemented already in your product. Then use some, some, some color coding, what, what is automated, what needs manual testing, L link it to the mobile testing cheat sheet and then get a connection and then have this as a living document because it's, it's, it's really likely that the product is changing faster than the documentation and then you spend too much time in reworking the documentation, the strategy, keep it lean and easy. Yeah? And then that's what I meant, revise the strategy to upcoming tech and product changes because otherwise you will lose the game in mobile testing. You're always perceived as the bottleneck in the team because you just have to update some strategy papers. Yeah? And if you would like to learn more, some cheesy marketing advice here, you can also get my book, Hands on Mobile App Testing, on Amazon or on LeanPub. There's everything included when you are working in mobile from where mobile devices are coming from, where apps are coming from, what app types are available, how to define a strategy, how to do a test automation, how to do manual testing, and whatnot. Everything is included. If you would like to get it, you know where to find it. Check the video description down below. And with that, 
That's it for today. What do you think about the mobile testing strategy in three steps? How is your strategy uh, look like? Do you have a strategy or not? I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below. As always, like it, share it and subscribe it. Happy to support me. Happy that you're here today. Have a great day and bye bye.